and welcome to Saving People, Queering Things, the supernatural podcast where they solve the case by accident yet again. Today, we are pulling up to Season 5, Episode 7, The Curious Case of Dean Winchester. I'm your host, Noah, and joining me today is my fabulous co-host, Elena. Hello, everyone. How are you doing today? Are you ready for this episode? I'm so fabulous, and I love this episode, so I, I'm here for it. It has the feels, it has the lols, it has <laughs> a dude with, with an Irish accent. You just can't go wrong. <laughs> you really can't. It's a win, 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 win. All of the wins. <laughs> now that we've all gotten to know each other, it's time to catch you up. If you haven't watched Supernatural recently, here's what you've missed on the road so far. First up, Elena is going to recap the show as a whole from the beginning. Everything you need to know. Are you ready? No pressure. I mean, I'm mostly going to recap season five because... Ooh. <laughs> there's already so much to handle right there <laughs> we're we're at that point where there's enough episodes of season five that recapping the whole show would just be a bit of a disaster that's absolutely fair <laughs> but i'm gonna do my best to maybe maybe spend like 15 seconds on the series and then 15 seconds on season five who knows there you go, we'll there you this go. Takes us. it's all about balance you ready mm -hmm. three two one go so Sam and Dean are two brothers who hunt monsters and demons and bad things. And they both like die and come back to life a bunch of times. And then there's like a gay angel and it's like a whole thing. Uh, but by this point, they've launched the apocalypse and set Lucifer free from hell. And uh, they are have found out that they're like vessels for like the, you know, uh, archangels and stuff. And then they get thrown forward in time. And there's all like a lot of sexual tension with the, the angel. And then there's like some fallen idols. And then, I don't know, they believe in children. And <laughs> it's the Antichrist. I don't know. Believe in children. What a <laughs> great summary. <laughs> no, you did great. That was fantastic. That was that was one of my worst and yet one of my favorites at the same time. You've had stronger, you know, final sentences, but this one, the, the rest of it was great. It was great. Thank you. Fantastic. Bless your heart. Are you ready to recap the episode, though? Absolutely. You know it. All right. Well, I'm going to count you in. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Okay. So right off the bat, it's a super big Bobby episode because he shows up, gets with Sam and Dean, beats them there, and then he loses at poker, gets old, motivates Dean to jump in. Dean loses. He's super old. Dean and Bobby have, you know, they bond a little bit more because they're shared in this oldness. And Sam's loving it up. They track down the witch and her assistant, Irishman, who is doing the cursing. The witch turns on him, realizes that everything they're doing is messed up, and they go back to normal. The end! Yay! Ooh, that was <laughs> a lot. Um, <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. So proud of you. Now that we're all caught up, it's time for us to pick some music to accompany us on our journey. Here's what we've got this week. Elena, did you want to start us off with your episode mixtape? I will. Um, I'm just going right on the nose. And uh, my selection this week is Older by Ben Platt. God, it's fantastic. I very love. Uh, particularly the chorus of this song is very, like, is very Dean and Bobby energy. Uh, it's when you're younger, you'll wish you're older. Then when you're older, you'll wish for time to turn around. Don't let your wonder turn into closure when you get older. Mm. Just very much. So the powerful. Feel. Yeah. What's going on this episode? I just, yeah, felt like felt like a good pick for this week. Yeah. Yeah, it's a fantastic pick. Thank you. I'm going to go with The Older I Get by Skillet. Ooh. Pretty okay. haunting track about growing older and growing out of the feelings that you had at that in those ages. It's mm -hmm. fantastic, old, and powerful. I feel like it fits this episode. Love that. I like that they both have the word older in them because yeah. we get yeah. old man Dean, which is <laughs> quite something. Which is iconic, honestly. Crotchety old man Dean. He's so but crotchety. One of my favorite moments of the whole episode is when Sam is just cackling and he's just like, it's like grumpy old man. <laughs> 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 he's just so delighted for that one moment and i think it's great <laughs> he's having a blast <laughs> he's been so going good. through so much the last two seasons that to just have that it. goofy moment with him is like yeah. oh sam i just want to pat your head and give you a hug seeing him have some fun is is a good time for sure well now that we've got our mixtape playing it's time for this week's hunt today we are exploring the sixth the seventh episode of season five, 
The Curious Case of Dean Winchester. This week's tarot card is the Seven of Goblets. Okay. Did you want to give us a little bit of a rundown of what the Seven of Goblets means? You know, I shall. So I'm going to first read, uh, we've been using this season the Supernatural Tarot deck. I'm going to read that description for us first and then talk a little bit more about just kind of the what the Seven of Goblets equivalent would be in a traditional tarot deck and some of the deeper meanings that could come from that. Love it. So the the guidebook for this particular deck for the Seven of Goblets, uh, which just is very on the nose in its depiction. Sometimes the cards have like, you know, more suggestive sort of images on them. This one literally just has seven goblets on the card. That's like all that's pictured. <laughs> um, and it describes it as the Seven of Goblets advises you to keep a grounded perspective when faced with multiple opportunities or choices. Grand visions and goals are great, but be careful not to get caught up in dreams and fantasy fantasies that you end up getting yourself into trouble Ooh. now is the time to focus on one thing choose wisely so no pressure yeah what i really love though is in traditional tarot the seven goblets that are pictured in this card will have like a variety of things in them so like one of them will have like a diamond one of them will have like some fruit one of them will have a snake and it's got like all these different things in it and mm. there's like a person facing them who's got like their back turned and so it's this card about like you having these, all of these wishes and all these illusions, this wishful thinking that's going on. And some of them are like, some of the things in the cups are gifts. And then some of them are curses. And it's a question of like, which one are you going to choose? And so I think that for an episode like this, where you've got people pursuing this, this card game in an attempt to like, you know, win some back, you know, what's the phrase they use in the episode, like, you know, get back some of your best years. Mm. And then some Sometimes they end up dying or losing and having to, you know, grow older way faster than they should. Um, I think it was just when August and I were selecting cards, I was like, this is a good one for this episode. Hell yeah. And it's also just hilarious because it's a seven and this is the seventh episode. <laughs> so that just felt very fitting. Um, so it I was really stoked to discuss this card for this episode. Hell yeah. Damn. Well, okay, let's get into it. I mean. Yeah. Dive right on it. Bobby is a badass and we knew that yes everybody knows of course that. We did. love to see him showing dean that by getting there before them yeah that, i was that was one of the first things i wanted to ask you about was how mm. you felt about like the fact that bobby beats them there such a good touch <laughs> and it's so bobby to <laughs> not be slid down trump's legs <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> rains trumps like what, a, legs. like what a bobbyism <laughs> he's like you ain't good for nothing except you can walk better than i can and yeah that's it yeah <laughs> so good uh then making a, an xbox reference was no. a little out of left field but hey yeah it was that was very what year, what year did this episode come out Two, wait like 2009? 2009 oh gosh 2009 classic xbox that was way too many years ago at this point um but yeah supernatural loves dating itself with those kinds of references but Constant. it's great that like you know the old guy who's suddenly younger just has zero idea what that is <laughs> like very very nice touch for like this is a young looking person who is clearly an old man and has no clue what this is yeah honestly it was it was good i like that how how did you feel about getting to see old dean first time watching old it? dean was fantastic Fantastic, honestly he okay it didn't look as similar as i would have hoped but yeah he had the the that. attitude down you know very much so he got all the mannerisms and the, the snarky attitude it was it was beautiful it was great to yeah. watch there are certain moments where like yeah he doesn't look like jensen at all but the, his mannerisms like he will be doing something and i'll be like wait that's not yeah that's not him <laughs> <laughs> he stands like Jensen. He he leans on stuff like Jensen. He doesn't get up the same uses, way because he's older, but that's part of the dumb phrases like like Dean does. Like <laughs> yes. he just doesn't talk like a normal person. Like, and that's one of the reasons I've always loved him so very dearly. Like he doesn't <laughs> he doesn't speak. No, no, no. It's beautiful. And I love him for it. <laughs> he was so good. And like like you said, the grumpy old men reference from from Sam is just <laughs> so good because they are. They're just grumpy old men because they lost some poker games. And okay. Okay. And you know what's funny? It's 
like the number of like things that Bobby points out is like, oh, that's sciatica, that's acid reflux. And that makes you realize. So Bobby experiences these things on the daily, he knows them. on the regular, and on the regular. And, and when hunts. have we ever heard him complain about it? Yeah, he don't, he doesn't whine about that at yeah. all. And so like, that's what the whole, you know, you don't hear me belly aching. And it's like, actually, that that is exactly what you're doing. <laughs> that's literally all you're doing. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's all you got by now. <laughs> yeah. I loved how as soon as, okay, as soon as Dean saw Bobby was older and had lost, he took him in, made sure he got his years back, and made yeah. sure Bobby was in the room so he could listen to the spells and oh, memorize yeah, that yeah. shit. He like, knows he would never remember that. Yeah, he's like he's aware of his his flaws. And that's that's I think the sign of a great hunter is knowing what you don't know. Exactly. And knowing that sometimes there are other people who are better suited for certain things. Yep. And having them there is a good idea. And he definitely didn't he didn't want Sam. He knows Sam could have done it too, but he doesn't want Sam yeah. in there. Oh, no, he wants Sam as far away from that. Bobby's already risked it. And so if he can yeah. get Bobby's years back and get him to memorize it, that's a win-win-win. I'm going to stop saying that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's applicable. It's applicable. <laughs> uh, I very much enjoyed seeing old Dean trying to do his flirty moves on oh my god okay getting wait. immediately shut down that was so good immediately immediately oh. I, I will admit i wasn't a huge fan of that moment just because like well he's still he's still treating her terribly and she just accepts it but the way it's, that it's the, her accepting it that's it's mm -hmm. it's not my my problem with that scene is the writing because i'm like why are we just being lazy and just yeah you know old men hit on young women and they just think it's cute like no, no. No. no it's creepy when old people hit on you i have been there and it is not a fun time you feel mm -hmm. very awkward and weird and so for her to be like oh you're so adorable i'm just like that said no one ever but but it is funny to but see dean having that moment of like you know i'm dangerous and she's just like oh dangerous oh look at you with your acid reflux <laughs> <laughs> it was so good he's thinks he's dying mm. yeah he thinks he's having a heart attack and i love how sam's little face he's just like oh no <laughs> and then bobby's just like <laughs> i really loved the jazzy back soundtrack of this episode i was gonna make a note of that. it was so good just so as i was as i was re-watching i i had the subtitles on and yeah. one of the funniest moments of the whole episode was when they're going up the stairs and the subtitles read jazzy music you know ceases <laughs> and then there's just that awkward silence and then as soon as dean walks in oh jazzy my god music resumes <laughs> yes it's so good it's i was dying mm. i was like this like watching shows with with subtitles can sometimes be a really unparalleled experience <laughs> yes. it just makes it so much funnier to see like how something is captioned in the mystery spot whenever dean dies in the shower <laughs> the subtitles there are <laughs> beautiful ah yeah they, yeah, they the, so the, the goofy little jazz music for for old dean was was great <laughs> yes <laughs> giving sam the clap a little a little unnecessary okay. i actually i have a i have a bone to pick with that moment do it pick it so when he does that i i always get like a little annoyed that it becomes a joke and he's like you know he just gave you the clap and then it's uh, ha 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 uh -huh. because he says you know sam i have this one thing for you and he does that the first time i watched the episode i interpreted that as him like as a bad guy applauding sam for starting the apocalypse yeah and is that's like a way to get like under sam's first. skin like that's what it feels like yeah and so for then to seconds later have it just turn into, nope, he just gave you an STD for funsies. It's just a missed dramatic opportunity, I think. All his villain credibility out the window. If it's like, yeah, okay. it was, just, it's a very, I've always felt very weird about that moment because every time that I'm watching it, I forget. <laughs> and like, like I, it happened again today. I was sitting there and I was like, it got to that point and he clapped for him. And I was like, oh, that's brutal. And then I was like, oh no, he's, this is, this is, this, the STD joke again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, why? Why is this necessary? And it just, sometimes I feel like with Supernatural, the writers get a little too scared to make the serious choice. And so mm. they, like, they start to, and then they just go, ha just kidding. <laughs> like somebody in an awkward interaction like they don't yeah, want you to think yeah. that they're serious and to me this is a big example of that we already know he has a cursed penis you don't have to tell us <laughs> oh 
Well, Sam Winchester in the case of the cursed penis. <laughs> <laughs> that can, that sums up. That's it. That's the show. That's, that's like, it. I mean, that's the show. We just end the podcast. Like the whole series is, is over now. We've summed it all up. The gay angel and his boyfriend, whose brother is. Yeah, the brothers, the brothers with the curse sticks. That's yeah. basically that's that's it. That's supernatural. Yeah. Thank yeah. you everyone for listening to our show. <laughs> it's it's been real. <laughs> Speaking of of the, of the gay angel who's not in this episode, not and it's in really this episode, at uh, all. but his his boyfriend, however, in in the case, so, so you know we have the curious case of Dean Winchester. In the case of Dean being by yeah. the moment where he pulls the sheet back and is just like, mm, mm, just checking the dude out, just no big comparing. You know, what's, what's... There's two naked women on the other side of the room, and uh, Dean's just uh, just wants to go up and check him out. And they try to play it off with the like, oh, your wife told us about the birthmark there, and so that's like, oh, like he's looking to see if the birthmark is there. But we already know because of the tattoo. Uh huh. Uh-huh. So like, Dean, did you have Dean, to? You didn't have to, but you wanted to, didn't you? Just a bit. Just a bit. Just admit it, sweetie. Big, just, big by energy. Big by energy from Dean, as always. Yep. Yep. I always love seeing more of the brothers bonding with Bobby and yes. getting more, I don't know. Bobby releases a lot of his frustrations in this episode and the brothers really walk him through it and they are there for him in such a great way. But how about that? The scene. So once Dean is like reset at the end and he's like back to himself and he like stops Bobby on the way out. I'm curious how you felt about that scene. Breaks my fucking heart. Bobby. Okay. Coming clean about considering suicide and trying to take that way out. And Dean sitting him down and saying, hey, stop it right fucking there. It's not okay. We need you. I can't do this without you. Don't you think about checking out? I don't want to hear that shit again. Yeah. Good. That's, that's exactly what he needed to say because Bobby needs to know that he's cared for and loved just as strongly as he cares and loves for others. And I think he recognizes it. And he does he does the classic like hunter thing where he tries to, you know, he tries to joke it off immediately after. Yeah. With the, you know, like can we go before we grow lady bits, which is just why unnecessary mm-hmm. of a lot, but whatever. But uh, it's the softness with which he just says, okay. Like yeah. Yeah. You know, like he acknowledges, like, yep, you're you're right. And okay. Um and I'm willing to bet that's why he didn't do it before, is because of the yeah. bars. If they weren't yeah, there. Because he, he knows that, like, he knows that he's their father. Mm-hmm. He's all and they've got left. I think he knows that they wouldn't be able to do it without him. It was powerful. And I was so g- glad to see it. Glad that they, they healed and bonded. I just very want to hug Bobby. That's yeah, so Bobby badly. Needs to hug very intensely this episode. Yeah. And he doesn't get enough of them ever. No. I'm sure he's very touch starved if we were to ask him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very much so. <laughs> I also love the implication that Sam has been playing Bobby and Dean as a bad poker player for years Mm. and is actually pretty all right. That's a fun reading. Right. I I hadn't actually considered that. Because they all give him shit about how he's the worst at poker of the three of them because... And then he kicks ass. He kicks ass. But they've got an established hierarchy from before. They know. Before. <laughs> He's like, I'm good and Bobby's better and you're the worst. Like, Yeah. Like, and uh, and yet, we take your yet. money. But he's the one that pulls through. I'm curious how you felt about the um the plot twist of the girlfriend of yeah. of the witch guy deciding that she wanted to to cash out. That's that's pretty bold. I really liked that that twist is that the brothers really don't do a lot except for bide for time. You know, it's all her and her powers, which she doesn't get a fucking name, which is oh god, terrifying. she doesn't does she? She doesn't. Ha- she's just re- referred to as the witch. And he's Patrick Ugh. using the witch's power, but she never gets a name and it hurts wow. because she's such an essential part of this plot line. She really doesn't, does she? Damn. Yeah, it's I am ashamed of myself for not even realizing that. As soon as they were like, Oh, it's a witch, I was like, Ooh, time for a witch name. You know, they always throw in some cool witch names. Nope. Nope. She's just random witch lady number five. <laughs> yeah. The woman, the nine hundred year old witch. The nine hundred year old witch. Yeah, that's 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 all they really refer to her as. Oh wait, Patrick's girlfriend Leah is what they refer oh. to her here, but I don't think they ever say that. Yeah, well, I'm guessing she probably had a name in the script. Yeah, 
Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so she does have a name. She has a name. But she does, it never gets said. So what's the <laughs> what's point? The, what's the like... point of naming there? No, I'm just kidding. Thank <laughs> you for actually. Okay. Anyway, it was it was a strong episode overall. It was great. Yeah bonding between the brothers between bobby and the brother ah oh, it was it was good I, only thing yeah. that could have made it better was if Cass showed up and got to hang yeah. out with old dean oh yeah how do you how do you think that would have gone down it would have been very interesting because Cass, i feel like wouldn't have reacted that differently yeah would Cass have just, would have just been like i mean that, you're that is dean up. winchester I'm like yep that's him oh does he look old <laughs> he looks a little wrinkly yeah i don't see wrinkles the way you just said that reminded me of a i don't know if you've seen there's a, a tiktok that's been going around where it's like look at the screen look at him is this your man <laughs> is this your man <laughs> she goes i'm gonna stand beside him <laughs> <laughs> i feel like that would very much be cast is this your man and he he would he, yeah. cast would go i'm gonna stand beside him <laughs> It would have been great. But yeah, I'm I'm really I was so stoked to talk to you about this episode because I really enjoy it. It's um and and especially one of my favorite bits is Dean's little freaking hop skip that he does. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Do we, just excited. He's such a dork. <laughs> After having completely worried Bobby and Bobby sitting here thinking that Dean is dead and he's just like, doo, doo, doo. <laughs> like hey, it's me. Look, I'm I'm young. It's so good. Ugh. Brian Chipper again. <laughs> he was doing an yeah. all right job of it as an old man, but he fits better with the youthful vigor. Yeah, he's like, when you get to be our age, Dean, you're 30. <laughs> Sir. Although, I mean, he lived 30 years in hell too. So he's mentally probably yeah. around 85, you know, being raised by John oh. Winchester advances you some. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah, he's at least, he's at least 70 mentally. Yeah. So he's older than Bobby psychologically. Which is- wild i'm not crying you're crying it's fine it's fine the important part is bobby bobby's yeah. all right he's there yeah he's fine. this is a, this is an episode where bobby really gets to shine it really is fantastic i i didn't love dean mentioning that killing bobby is on his bucket list oh <laughs> that feels <laughs> I see here's the thing I actually I always enjoy those moments in a show where like a person who loves another person like says they want to kill that person yeah. because you know that it's just them it's they're just like oh dang it yeah yeah <laughs> it's, it's, it's like with those sibling moments where it's like no one's allowed to you know be mean to my siblings but me yeah sure no that's that. you have like 84 siblings <laughs> so I'm sure you relate. true yeah it, it I can talk like shit about them all day like but the second anyone else does game over yeah they they you're gonna throw hands yeah abs- absolutely well fantastic now that we've wrapped up that episode pretty smoothly we're gonna slide into our going meta section where we are tracking lore representation behind the scenes trivia and more first up we're gonna start with our representation check rep check which is where we <laughs> it wouldn't have been complete until you said that i was like i was like i'm gonna wait i'll wait i'll, I'll sit here in silence <clears throat> until it happens that's fair I yeah. think we've we've talked a little bit about Bobby's representation and as a disabled person at this point, he's, you know, kicking ass. Yeah, I, I will say, I think it's a bit of a, it is a bit of a shame how Bobby, I think, reacts yeah. to this, this new disability that he experiences. It's a lot of it is very, is very tropey in terms of like ableism, but it's one of those things where it's like when you're in that situation, it's, it's really hard to be objective. Mm-hmm. Because you're like, you're thinking about this is this is not how I've lived my life up to this moment. And now I have to live my life this way. And I didn't want to live my life this way. And so I'm going to be bitter about it. And so while I feel like the writers could have definitely been a bit more nuanced with it, like, I think they do a good job at capturing how frustrated he is. Yeah. With his situation. Yeah, that is very true. I wish they had done it better, but I do yeah. appreciate what we got. Mm-hmm. I really wish they had mentioned the witch's name yep that would have been nice that would have been super cool had her talk to another woman even better so yeah in in what world where they do that at like it's God, just it's so baffling that an episode that revolves around a woman doesn't even name her it's crazy it's fine it's fun it's, it's a damn shame mm. we had but, some uh... representation for older folks in this episode was nice for for once <laughs> we had we had a person over the age of 45 on the show <laughs> Ooh, dean might Isn't be able to Bobby win our this? dean's gonna end up winning the uh oldest character award <laughs> <laughs> probably 
<laughs> we, can, we can make that early prediction. Oh, no. Yeah, it might this be. Time. Besides that, there wasn't a lot of, okay, well, I mean, we got an Irishman. That's not. Yes, we did, which I enjoyed. It, yeah, I always, I'll always be down to talk with an Irishman. Um, That just sounded sexual. <laughs> Didn't mean. <laughs> Phenomenal. <laughs> it's fine. So get this. I was looking into the lore and, uh, you know, we get some witches this episode, but I think the, my favorite bit of the lore is that we, we get this guy who's this like ancient ass witch who, you know, goes around playing this poker game, doing this stuff and they don't get him at the end. No. Like he just, they just are like, well, we made sure that we got out alive and we're just not going to fuck with you anymore. Cause they know and he they doesn't have power drop. and they just dip. Bye. Yeah. Well, I don't know that it's that they don't, they know he doesn't have power. I think it's that they know, like, he's got too much of it. Well, but wasn't he powered by her? No, I don't think so. Oh, I thought all of his power comes from her and then... When oh, she... no, no, no. He was the witch. And then she was, like, uh, someone that he fell in love with and was keeping alive. Hey, okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, so he just he just manages to get away scot-free. Yeah. I mean, he loses the woman that he loves, which sucks, but... But they just move on. They say, yeah. you know what? That's not our fight. And I just think out. that's interesting. It's very rare that they'll do that on Supernatural where they just like a, like abandon ship on the case, basically. <laughs> yeah. um, and that's just kind of what they did with this one. They were like, well, we, we beat him and we're not going to fuck with him again. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Mark this spot off on the map, and we're good. Yep. <laughs> we see any dude's name, Patrick. Avoid. <laughs> Avoid Patrick's. That's a smart, a smart call. Smart call. Yeah. Besides that, not a ton of other lore discussed no. in this episode. Yeah, finding out that the magic didn't come from the chips, that it was it was Guy. No other hunters show up. It might be worth noting that the man who plays Patrick, Hal Ozen, mm -hmm. co-starred with Jensen Ackles in a bit of Dawson's Creek. So they've they've got some history together. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. And this is also one of the episodes where the uh, the title is based on a movie slash book, Curious Case of Benjamin Button. And they say that, in the, they even mentioned Benjamin Button in the episode at one point. So, like, we're going to Benjamin, but Benjamin Button me. <laughs> They're just going to jump right into that. They, they owned it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> gotta, gotta love it when it gets meta like that. Yeah. It makes our job even easier. <laughs> Now it's time for our final section of the episode, which is our character blessings. Fantastic section. Love it. One of my favorites. Elena, who would you like to bless this week? Yeah, bless Cass. He's not here. I, I mean, I mo I can always bless Cass. That's Don't true. Me. You could. Don't tempt me. Uh, I'm going to bless Dean specifically towards the end of the episode because I feel like he takes what Bobby said really hard oh, and yeah. the emotion that comes out in his... <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say something. I was like, damn it. <laughs> this is going to derail her whole thought. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I tried. I, I typed so Biabi and it ruined, it ruined Elena's oh, blessing. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Oh, it's okay. Um, <laughs> I think that his emotions, his emotions there at the end of the episode are, are really raw and genuine and his care for Bobby really shows. And so I just want to, I want to bless him for having to hear like a person who is basically a parent to you hear that they don't want to be here anymore is not easy. No. So I would want to bless him for having to experience that and have the wherewithal to tell that person, you better stick the fuck around because I care about you. Yeah. Yeah, he did it and he does it. And I'm so proud of him for it. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and throw my blessing to Bobby because like- I knew you were going to and that's why I didn't bless Bobby yeah, because I knew yeah. you would. <laughs> and that's all right. That's fine and valid of you because I will always bless Bobby. He you know you needs it this episode because he's he's being honest with his boys about some really hard truths. And I'm proud of him for taking that step. Proud of him for not taking that other step. Yeah. And I'm tremendously. Glad. I'm glad that they're being honest and upfront about their emotions. And that's beautiful and wholesome. Mm -hmm. And I can't wait to see where it goes from here. Mm -hmm. Blessings to Bobby and Dean. Always. Well, that brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for coming today, Elena. It's been a blast and I love it every time. It's a treasure every time. It's it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, and this this really this is one of those episodes where like yeah it's it's got some heavy elements to it, but on the whole, it's one of the lighter episodes of the season. Yeah. 
Um, just a bonding episode. Yeah, you get to have a couple laughs. Um, I love how this is after we just got done discussing one of the main characters discusses wanting to die. <laughs> yeah. um, but you know, it's it's supernatural, everyone. You got to have that, you know, roller coaster of emotions back and forth mm-hmm. all day. It's been great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Make sure you are subscribed to Saving People Queering Things wherever you listen to podcasts and share our show with your friends. You can find links to our social media and join our Discord server through our website, QueeringThingsPodcast.com. And if you are all caught up on Supernatural and want to get back to before the beginning, you can listen to August and occasionally myself with our friends Beth and KJ over at Wayward Parents with updates at Wayward Parents on Twitter or on Tumblr at Wayward Parents Podcast. Be sure to ride along with us next week as we explore Season 5, Episode 8, Changing Channels. You know, a little bit of a big Uh, deal here. One of the most classic episodes of Supernatural ever. Mm, I'm excited. It's going to be great. Thank you all for coming along for the ride, and we wish you a peaceful road until we meet again.